Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we return to our series of basically decks. If you haven't seen these decks before, these are the decks that you can put together without spending a single rare or mythic to build. That is awesome! That's right, and with this video, we're going to begin the three color series of decks, starting off with this deck that I'm calling basically Pirates. Here they come. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So as you can see here, our pirate deck is going to be Grix's colors, which means it'll be blue, black, and red. We're looking at a total of, wow. 37 creatures in the deck, and we're locking, of course, at only two instants, one enchantment, and only 20 lands. In recent times, pirates have become quite the versatile type of creature that we never really expected we're going to be able to do what they do. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, we're going to take advantage of everything that pirates are capable of doing. Pirates are evasive. Pirates are aggressive. Pirates are capable of doing a mid-range and even a little touch of control, depending on how we tweak our deck. But you're about to see right now what we mean with that. Starting in the one drop slot here, you'll have Spectral Sailor here, which is great for you because it has flash and flying, makes it nice in evasion. Doesn't do that much damage, but it's great for the utility to help us draw cards in the mid or late game for four mana. Spyglass Siren here will enter the battlefield. It also has flying for evasion and also will create a map token for us. We can then cash that in a little bit later, and hopefully we'll either get to pump up one of our creatures or pull a land out when we need to. Greedy Freeboater here is a great little chump blocker here because when this creature dies, you'll be able to scry one and create a treasure token for pseudo ramping. With Reckless Lackey, you'll be able to then do a little bit of more aggressive damage. It has First Strike and Haste, but also you can cash it in for 3 mana to sacrifice it, draw a card, and also create a treasure token. In the 2 drop slot, we're going to have a little bit of additional evasion with Kite Sail Corsair here. When it does attack, you'll be able to gain flying, making it very tricky for your opponent to handle. However, with the 2 drop slot, we'll also be able to use Staunch Crewmate here, so when it enters the battlefield, you get to dig 4 cards deep to either get an artifact or pirate card from among them and put it into your hand, so great for us to keep the momentum going. To throw off your opponent's game plan, however, you also will utilize Kite Sail Freeboater. You'll be able to then get a little look at what your opponent's trying to do, and either get to then exile one of their cards as long as it's a non-creature, non-land card, Granted, of course, you'll have to give it back to them if the card does end up getting destroyed. In the 3-drop slot, however, this is again where the real fun begins for the deck, so we're going to talk about this card briefly. Forerunner of the Coalition. This is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two human pirate that reads, when it enters a battlefield, you get to search your library for a pirate card, reveal it, and shuffle that card. Then you shuffle and put that card on top. Whenever another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. So this is great for us to then slowly burn out your opponent as we keep digging out more and more pirate cards and casting them as they enter the battlefield. Your other card here that's also going to be able to then kind of go hand in hand with this is Lightning Rig Crew. So this card specifically is a 3 mana 0 5 Goblin Pirate. You simply tap it to do 1 damage to each opponent. However, whenever you cast a pirate spell, you get to untap Lightning Rig Crew. So both of these cards are great for us to do a little bit of extra reach where you can just burn out your opponent little by little. Lightning Rig Crew here is also pretty sweet because also not only is it a great blocker, but also it's not a defender. So you technically can't attack with it, assuming you can have a way to pump it. To round out the rest of your package here, you'll have a 4 drop here, you're going to use Dire Fleet Neckbreaker. The card itself has attacking pirates you control, get plus 2 plus 0, which is a great way to finish off your entire opponent's game plan. As far as the non-creature spells are, this is going to be as simple as can be. We just want to hopefully sync our opponent's whole game plan, so that's where we're going to use Fiery Cannonade here, and only 2 copies of it in the main deck. So basically it just does a little bit of pseudo wrathing to deal 2 damage to each non-pirate creature. Nice for us, because it'll allow us to keep sailing high while our opponent gets sunk to the ocean depths. And then finally, in the 4-drop slot, just a single copy of that, Raider's Week. Since our deck is mostly focused on trying to be a little bit on the aggro plan, all we'll simply do is just need one copy of this. Basically, Raider's Wake is a 4-mana enchantment that reads, whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses 2 life, and the raid ability will trigger in weaning that this will happen as long as we have attacked this turn. And if we do, that means that at the beginning of your end step, if we did attack, our opponent will have to discard a card. For your mana base, we're going to utilize the what you would assume, since we are a budget deck, we're going to have islands, of course, some swamps, some mountains to dig out those. Granted, they will come into play tapped, but Maestro's Theater is going to be perfectly fine for us. And then since we are very much focused on the creature game plan here, we'll take advantage of the fact that we can use Secluded Courtyard and Unclaimed Territory to fix our mana to make sure that we have what we need when we need it. And then finally, to round out the package, a single copy of Volatile Fault here, mostly as non-basic land hate, and also 
also, of course, it creates for us a treasure token. As far as your sideboard, if you do want to play some best of three, it's going to be as follows. A single copy of March of the Drown here. Since we are a pirate's deck, this is basically going to help us dig back out of our graveyard two pirates for only a single mana, which is great value. Your enchantment hate and also a little bit of pseudo creature hate, feed the swarm. A braid will be the opposite when it comes to artifacts, but also we can then take off a creature in a pinch. And since we are, again, taking advantage of the fact that we are pirates, we can utilize one really sweet counter spell, Lookout's Dispersal, which of course will be cheaper. So basically it's a two mana counter spell with our opponents because we are utilizing pirates. If we do need a little extra removal, and it also does help us trigger a little easier with Maestro's Theaters going off, we have Fatal Pushes as additional removal. Soul Guide Lantern here is going to be your catch-all for Graveyard Hate. Buccaneer's Bravado here, just to help us give maybe one of our creatures a little bit of extra push and finishing off our opponent with one of our flyers, and an extra copy of Fiery Cannonade if we just need a little extra support with Wraths. Now, in terms of how to set sail with this crew and get the most out of them, one of your biggest advantages is every single one of your pirates has some kind of utility or some kind of way to be either evasive, aggressive, or throw off your game plan, which is actually the biggest advantage, of course, of being pirates anyway, is just how tricky they can be depending on what your opponent is trying to play. If you're able to get a kite sail free boater out in the early game, that's actually going to be your best second turn play, mostly because you get a peek at your opponent's game plan and you get to see what they're trying to do, even if you cannot exile a non-creature, non land card from them. All of your one drops may seem very weak at first, but remember that all of them, of course, have utility, whether they die with either getting you some card draw, or again, you can then utilize some of their artifacts they make to then either ramp you or then just dig out some other extra pieces to pump up your rest of your pirate crew. The other major advantage, of course, is your three drops, of course, are going to be the most key pieces to help you ensure that you have longevity, even if you end up having to gum up the board with your whole plan. For one of the coalitions, believe it or not, you actually can chain them all together so you can keep digging out extra copies, putting them on top of one or the other, which is a little bit on the slow side, but this will ensure that you can chain them all together to do extra damage. Since you are a creature focused deck, your biggest weakness, of course, is you have to deal with a lot of spot removal if your opponent has that. And of course, if you get too greedy, you're going to have moments where your opponent may wrath. And if you could not get that wrath out of their hand with a kite sail free boater, you're going to have a bad time and it's going to be really hard for you to recover. So this is why it's important to then adjust your game plan, utilizing cards like like Lightning Raid Crew to either tap to do some extra damage, utilizing your Forerunner of the Coalition to ensure that you can keep chaining together extra cards and as well as Staunch Crewmate. If you do feel confident enough, of course, to throw out your whole plan, by all means do so, but just remember to save your Dire Fleet Neckbreaker until the coast is clear, no pun intended, to then ensure that you can swing hard and then win with your crew. Any way you slice it, no matter how you look at it, the biggest strength, of course, is diversity of each of your pirates in this crew, and if you choose to be the captain of it, you'll definitely have a lot to work with and a lot of different ways you can get to your victory. Now, with that out of the way, of course, if you are interested in taking pirates to the next level, or maybe you do want to kind of try some other variants of Grixis, as always, I will leave on screen right here, as you can see, some other decks that we've done in the past and some other variants of pirates that we have done as well, so you can kind of get a feel for maybe other things that you might want to do. Of course, I will leave those links in the descriptions, and of course, they have been linked out throughout this video. And with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck overall. As of the most recent sets in Standard, thankfully we have just enough pirates to finally make a fully fleshed out budget deck. It is a little bit on the rough side because again, we are missing a couple key pieces that are rares or mythics, but even so, as you saw from just the examples we talked about today, the deck is still capable of pulling off some things out of nowhere if your opponent is not prepared. Or to put it another way, if you're still a fan of Grixis midrange, if you're a fan of the pirates as a creature type, and if you're a fan of some of the unique synergies that this deck can provide you, I would definitely say give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to pull out a bunch of pirates, and maybe you might be able to either pull off an aggro win or maybe the burn win, you'll be having a lot of fun along the way doing so. You'll be very surprised at what pirates are capable of, and I assure you, you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!